The life of a writer involves hearing many variations on the word no. Rejection comes with the territory, but that does not make it easier to experience. Let's discuss coping with rejection, how to continue writing through them, and what you can learn from receiving a no. Here are more notes from my Capclave 2023. Welcome back to Morgan's Writing Tips and Writerly Musings with writing tips from the pros and, of course, my own writerly musings. I'm your host, Morgan Hazelwood, and today I'm here with Rejections Happen, tips from Capclave 2023. The panelists for the titular panel were as follows, A.T. Greenblatt, R.Z. Held, Rhiannon, and Nate Hoffelder. The panel was moderated by Scott Edelman. So let's start with first rejection stories. No matter how long you've been writing, every writer remembers their first rejection. The panelists shared theirs. Scott Edelman's first rejection took three days. Back in the days of snail mail, it was so quick at first, he thought he'd mixed up the addressee and sender addresses. Rhiannon Held was at a writer's conference, and she had her best poker face on while getting her work critiqued. And afterwards, she was told that her face was a lot more expressive than she'd thought. For A.T. Greenblatt, uh, she was impatient, so she found a place with a 24-hour turnaround and sent her writing off. But no matter the speed, it still hurt. So now let's talk about things that can help you go on when you get that rejection. Well, remember, every writer is different and things that can help one week might just pour salts on the wound the next. But here are some things you could try. Number one, a long walk while contemplating ways to engage or to get some feedback from someone else. Uh, tip two is take a writing class. Make sure that your skills are up to snuff and all that critique in class will prepare you for rejection. Three, for some, especially early in your career, there are craft skills you can learn and improve. Dialogue, pacing, description, action, etc. Whatever your weak point is. Another thing to try is to have the next market lined up. So when you're ready to send, when you get that rejection. Another thing to try is to be stubborn like a fox. If you hit a wall, don't just bash it. Figure out how you can go over or under or around it or coax your way past it. Another thing is to find a hobby or distraction that takes effort can be finished, like knitting or baking, something that is not a side hustle. Another thing, pick a number and every X number of rejections, treat yourself. Remember that you are not your manuscript. Find joy outside of publishing. Now, if the process of writing brings you joy, embrace it. But for most of us, that feeling of satisfaction is counterbalanced by the goal of taking it to the next stage, publishing awards, etc. Um, if they give you feedback, do a gut check if it matches the story you wanted to tell or you feel it would make the story better, stronger. Go for it. Otherwise, just move on. So. How do we handle imposter syndrome? There are magazines and anthologies and agents with all these award-winning authors. Why would I get a second look? Well, that's where they all started. Award and award-winning authors get rejections too. All their name usually gets them is a second look. So, now let's talk about the rejections that really hit hard. Some writers find form rejections hit harder because they weren't even close, while others find that personalized rejections hit the worst because they were so close. 
But either way, there are some rejections that just stick with you. From the panelists, here are some of the ones that hit hardest. Number one, the rejection ipsum, where they put so much sympathy language and take far more page space than they need to just to say, it's not my cup of tea. Number two, the tepid rejection, where the no is so softened, it takes multiple rereads to figure out they were saying no in the first place. Number three, the tiered rejection, where they send you a note to say you're still under consideration and then reject you. Hope can be more crushing than silence. And the almost there rejection, where they tell you they love the ending but can't figure out how to fix the start or vice versa. Well, thanks for nothing. So when you get that sort of thing, how do you risk resist responding to the editor or agent? Well, obviously you're sending your best work out and agents or publishers would be lucky to get their hands on it. Or maybe if they could just tell you what you did wrong, you could fix it. Unfortunately, most agents and publishers don't have time to give you a critique and telling them they were wrong for not buying your story isn't gonna win you friends. So here are some ways to resist responding. Number one, rant to friends or family, but not in public spaces, either in person or virtually. Um, now remember, some ranting friends join in with like, those jerks, they don't deserve your book. And some ranting friends give you advice like, you know, they had a point. Have you tried? Another thing to prevent you from sending off letters is to contemplate what would actually happen if you sent the note telling them they're wrong. Do you actually think they would change their minds? Another option is to write it but not send it. Eventually, most writers outgrow the urge on good days. So do agents or editors remember writers? Querying so often feels like shouting into a void with rejections given with hardly any thought at all. With all the submissions, surely they don't remember me. Well. Joshua Bilmes talks about Brandon Sanderson querying him, and Joshua liked Brandon's writing, but thought the plots weren't quite there, and Brandon kept submitting and getting closer and kept submitting until Joshua decided he knew how to fix the plot on this one. A.T. Greenblatt was at uh, ReaderCon, and had two separate editors come up to her and tell her that she was getting close. Agents and editors who think you're getting close, who recognize your name, often will give your stuff a second look. Read a few more pages. You just need to keep at it. So what are your coping mechanisms for rejection? What rejection really stuck with you? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and tune in again next week for more writing tips and writerly musings. Bye bye.